this is the fifth part of the, this lecture on Axe Channel for the J function. And uh, in this part, we will prove the first part of Axe Channel. So, as I say, we will not look at the second part. So, I will maybe say something like weak. Weak Axe Channel for J function. So, let me just write the term we want to prove here. So you take some, uh, let's say, holomorphic function in one variable or convergent power series. I call it T at. I take non-constant power series and, in fact, n of them. And I assume the transcendence degree over C of the field generated by all the all this power series, I will I will just write T without any index here. J of T. Again here it means J of T1, T2, etc. G prime of T and J second of T. So you have four n functions, and you assume it is strictly smaller than three n plus one. Then you will find two index and a polynomial in two variables. Y k y l such that. P of J of T K J of T L is zero. So there is one polynomial relation between two uh, two entries of this vector here. And uh, as I say, we will not work here, but in order to use our theorem, we will uh, translate everything in the linear model. So uh, let's, let's call it linear translation. Yeah. On yeah. U of Y, which is a matrix, yeah. two by two matrix up to multiplication by plus and minus one, so it's a two by two matrix with determinant one here, uh, whose entries satisfy u one one of y over u two one of y is a certain function tau of y whose inverse whose inverse is j of t. So if you do so, you can translate this into this uh, theorem here, which is a one. We will prove that if you uh, start with, no, I call it y hat, some power series, non-constant, y hat will be j, this will be y hat. Okay. This will be the two component of y hat. If your transcendence degree is small enough, so if the transcendence degree over C of the field generated by the entries of Y and all the entries of U of Y. Here I get N function and here I have four entries but one polynomial relation. The determinant must be equal to one. So I have three entries that are evaluating 
n function, so I have three n function here, n here, so four n like this one, this this field are exactly the same. Up to the uh, irrational transformation I gave you in the second lecture. So if this transcendence degree is smaller than three n plus one, or let's say the dimension of PSL2 of C to the n plus 1, then the same conclusion holds. Yeah? There is this k should be smaller than a, a polynomial p into variable such that p of yk at yl at is 0. Identically. So these two theorems are the same theorem in two different models, so up to some birational uh, change of coordinate. So, but this one fit in the uh, framework of the main theorem we proved in the first lecture. So we will prove the theorem. We prove it using what I call the, our main theorem. So <clears throat> this was something about a linear differential equation. So just in our context, we have to apply this theorem with uh, first x is just y to the n, remember that y is just c with some dot out. Yeah. Here I have coordinate y1 to yn. SL2C to the end. The solution I'm looking at, the unknown, I mean, yes, the function I'm looking at is u tilde, which is a function on a small disk with value in this group. So I see this group as a block diagonal copies of SL2. And so here I have u y1 u yn yes with u this matrix here evaluated in each time a different coordinate so the graph of this that I also call it leaf leaf is a uh, tilde which is a subset of this one, and which is just the uh, Cartesian product of the graph of u seen in each copy of PSM2. And my curve, gamma, from a small neighborhood of 0 in C to uh, this leaf, is just sending s to the first coordinate in yn. So remember that this is a subset of y of, of x cross g. So I have to take <coughs> n power series that are this one and n matrices that are just this one evaluated in the y's at. Okay, so I am in the context of the theorem I told you in the, in the part 4. And we have some hypotheses to, uh, to verify in order to apply our theorem. So hypothesis 1. You know, it's about 
the Galois group of this leaf. We have to compute it. Yeah, but remember that as this leaf is a product, Cartesian product, of all of these one, its Zariski closure is a Cartesian product of the Zariski closures. And then the stabilizer is a Zariski pro product of the stabilizer. Okay, so this is just the Galois of L cross Galois of L. But now we have computed that. Or if you want, we can redo it. L is a graph up to a change of coordinate, it's just a graph of the J function. J function is a quotient by PSL2 of Z, so its graph, its graph is invariant by PSL2 of Z. So the stabilizer of, its, of the Zariski closure must contain PSL2 of Z and must be an algebraic group, meaning that this is PSL2 of Z, and I take N of them, okay, the Galois group of a leaf, if the whole group G. So the hypothesis one is okay. Hypothesis two, we need to uh, verify that this group is good. Okay, so uh, we have to prove that this group is good group. So we have to study the uh, sub-algebra, sub the algebra of its the algebra, and to see that it satisfies this uh, uh, definition of good group. Then, if we, so this is the first step. Then we can apply our theorem. Then applying, applying the mem. Theorem, we get a polynomial P, so we get that the projection of Zabriski closure into uh, X which is y to the n, is, a strict, is contained in a strict algebraic sub-variety. So there is a polynomial that vanishes on the projection, that look, the projection now, contain the Zariski closure of this small curve here. So this means that there is a polynomial in y1, yn, such that p of y hat identically zero. And so if we do that and the second conclusion of the theorem is that the Galois group of the restriction above P equals zero The restriction of the leaf L above P equals zero, or maybe not P equals zero, above let's say the Zariski closure of our curve is strictly smaller than this group is included but different from PSA 2 of C to the end. And then you will see when we will prove that this that this is true and that we have a nice description of the subgroup of this one. Yeah. So uh, we will then look at the projection. You see th this is Y cross PSA 2 C to the end, then we will look at all the projection here of this leaf into uh, 
all these factors, and we will get that this subgroup, let's say H, H projects on each factors, each factors here onto each factors. So we have a nice description of, of this one, and then, so let's say this is this is the first step. The second step is to apply the theorem, and the third step is to analyze what is given by the projection here. So this is a projection on one factor, and then if you look at the projection on couples of factors, you will see that if uh, z of gamma, the projection on y cross y, which is a kl, let's say pr kl, projection, meaning the projection on the k and l's factor in the product here, is this, is on two, then the projections of uh, this age on products of two factors. So on this is the case, and this is a S factor that correspond to this one, then the projection of H here is on 2. So it's surjective. And it cannot be that all the projections on factors are on 2, all the projections on couples of factors are on 2, and the subgroup is strictly included in this one. So if we uh, prove that, one of the P K L is not an, and its image is the Zabriski is a relation we are looking at. Okay. In fact, the uh, longest step is this one, to prove that this group is good. But then, during this step, we will see all the ingredients that may allow us to, to conclude here. And so then, this is, uh, it is easier. Okay, so the theorem is here. Step one is here, and we will start with this, the step one. Step one is about uh, what is called the Gursa lemma. And consequences.
So I will give you this lemma in the special case of Lie algebras, but the lemma itself is true for groups and the uh, uh, proof we are using, we are giving here, can be easily adapted for algebraic groups, or in fact for Lie groups and then proving that they are algebraic. So uh, I will give all the theorem for Lie algebra, but then in the last part that I just erased here, we have to use it for groups, but you will see that the proof are essentially the same. So what is this Gursalem? For Lie algebra. So you start with three Lie algebras and one is inside the product of the two others. So let be a sub Lie algebra. of a product of two Lie algebras such that the projection on each factor is on two. Then you will find in each of these algebra an ideal meaning the kernel of a, a projection of GI onto another Lie algebra, yeah, a morphism, a kernel of a morphism of Lie algebra. So, and a Lie algebra isomorphism on G1 divided by Q1 to J2. K2, uh, Lie algebra isomorphism such that uh, your H is a set of couple B1, B2, so couple of uh, elements here such that the phi of B1 plus K1 is V2 plus K2. Yeah? This is the image of V1 here. So this is Gorsalema. So proof <coughs> is not very long, so uh, you're looking at the kernel of the first projection. It is something inside this Lie algebra and it projects on zero here so there are all the elements like this. Into H. Yeah. As it is a kernel, this is an idea. Yeah. And as a projection the second projection of H on G2 is on 2. Uh, it's not K1, it's K2, excuse me, because it is on the second part. So this is a kernel of this one. Now, if you look at the projection into J, uh, G2, you will get K2 into G2. And because it is on 2, each element of G1 can be, of G2, can be lifted to H. And now, taking the Lie bracket with this one, you will see that this is an idea in G2. You do the same for K1. Yeah? This is for, you take the kernel of the second projection, it is 
K1 cross 0 and blue H, and because of the subjectivity of the second of the first projection, you will find K1 into this uh, Li algebra G1. Okay, and now you just look at H that you uh, quotient by K1 plus K2, which is into which which is a subalgebra of the quotient of this one by these two, and the quotient of this one by these two is just the product of the quotient of this one. And you look carefully at that. And what you see is that if you look at the kernel of the first projection here, yeah, where is my first projection? Uh, here, you look at the kernel of the first projection, it is a set of elements of these that are sent to uh, 0 cross k2. This is yeah, 0 cross k2. But you know, all the elements that are sent to 0, there are, uh, there are k1. Yeah. And so the kernel of the first projection is just k1 cross k2. The same for the second, the kernel is k1 uh, plus k2. So these both projections are uh, injective and subjective. So both projections are isomorphism. Yeah, and then you take the first projection back and then the second one and you get your isomorphism here. Two steps you build the K1 and K2, and then you have just to verify that this quotient here realizes the isomorphism, the isomorphism you want, and that H is sent to this kind of things. Okay, it is a uh, you have just to write maybe three or four lines of detail more. So, a corollary. of this, that if you take uh, H in SL2, a sub Lie algebra of SL2C cross SL2C, a Lie sub, sub Lie algebra with both projection onto Then there exists some uh, matrix, yeah, it is up to multiplication by plus minus ones, matrix here, so that uh, your H is a set of couple B1, B2 such that B1 is in the conjugacy class of B2 and, is con and this is the element that realizes the conjugation. And so you can see this has a 2x2 two two matrix with trace 0, this 2x2 two two matrix with determinant 1 up to multiplication by plus minus 1, and then you are just looking at couples of matrix of trace 0 that give you the same thing up to a change of variable, a uh, change of coordinate. Okay? In new coordinate, new basis, you have the same matrix. Okay, and then uh, writing this, okay, so the proof 
use some fact of, uh, uh, let's say, representation theory, or I will give you the fact here that we are using. It is just to apply Bursa. And then applying Gursa, you get these two uh, ideal, but uh, SA2 of C is simple. Mean that the ideal are two. the only possibility for ideal are the two trivial possibilities. So this means K1 is either zero of everything. Now, it, if it is everything, okay, if it is everything, this means that you cannot have, uh, it must be everything on both sides, see, because you must have an isomorphism here. If one is everything, the two are everything, the isomorphism is just the identity from zero to zero, and this subalgebra is everything. So it must not be everything, so it is zero. Meaning that phi is an isomorphism from SL2 of C to SL2 of C iso. Okay? So this is the first step, apply Gursa. Second step, use simplicity of SL2. And then use another fact about SL2 that all the automorphism of SL2 are inner. Yeah, this means that there exists in C in PSL2 of C such that V1, it is phi of V1 or phi of oh, or maybe it is better if I put a 2 and a 1 here to write the same way I, I wrote since here. C V1, C minus 1. Okay, so the proof of this corollary, okay, the only the principal ingredient is this one. Then uh, you have a corollary of the corollary that PSA2 plus PSA2, PSA2 of C plus PSA2 of C is good. So I will let that you so just give the few steps so if the projection are not on two then uh, so if you take a Lie algebra into the product of the Lie algebra here if one of the projection is not on two then you're working in one factor where the projection is not on two here you have a Lie algebra which is strictly included in SL2 you know that it, this Lie algebra is inside the Lie algebra of an algebraic group yeah. And this algebra group cross PSL2 will give you the group you need to prove that your algebra you started with is included in the Lie algebra of an algebraic group. Now, if both projections are on two, you apply that. You get that your Lie algebra has this shape. But you see that this is the Lie algebra of H which is the set of couple of matrices H1, H2, such that H2 is C, H1, C minus 1. But now these are in PSL2 cross PSL2. Now, the same equation, but in 
instead of taking a couple of matrices of trace zero, you have just a couple of matrices of determinant one up to indefinite multiplication by plus or minus one. So this is the algebra of a algebraic proof. So when the projection is onto, there is no problem. Every Lie algebra is the Lie algebra of an algebraic group. When it is not on to, you just apply the thing we see on PSL2. Okay, but we want to prove that uh, any size of the product will be uh, good. And uh, in fact, we will need for the last part of the proof a more, uh, a more accurate description of the Lie subalgebra. So, let H be inside the different product of n copies of SL2, a least sub algebra, a sub algebra, with projections, the n projection on each factor, onto. Then, there exist two index and matrix, 2 by 2 determinant one, such that H is included in the set of, uh, in the graph um, of some uh, conjugation. So I have a set of elements here, such that V, K, where is the smallest? V, L. We see V, K, C minus 1. So we'll see how to, uh, how to prove that. Um, yeah, and uh, uh, and we have some consequences of that. First, uh, the projection KL of H is not on two. SL2C. SL2C. That's a projection on the KL's coordinate. And uh, uh, and it will prove that uh, the theorem is good. And another consequence, so we will use that, but also it proves that PSL2 of C to the end is good, as now you do the same we did here. Take a sub -Li algebra, which is a strictly sub algebra. If the projection, if one of the projection is not on two, then you walk in this SL2, and here you're building the group you need. If both projections, if all the projections are on two, then you apply this theorem and you have a projection in a copy of two, which is this one, which is not on two, which is exactly given by the Lie algebra of a Lie sub, of an algebraic subgroup. And so this subgroup made the job. So uh, there is no problem with that. Uh, the proof of this theorem, as you see, we already did the n equal 2 step. We know the n equal 1, so the proof is by induction. So, uh, you have your Lie algebra H, it is in this product, so it is in the product of the first times what is missing. Yes. And now you look at the projection here. If the second projection 
Yeah, the projection on this factor here is not on 2, then you have a strict subalgebra of this one, yes, whose projection on each factor is on 2, because the projection of each factor are the same as the projection of this one. We can first project here and then on each factor. So you can apply the theorem for n minus 1. Yeah, we are reasoning we are doing a proof by induction, so it is okay. Yeah. You apply and you find your two indexes here that are doing the job. Then, if the second projection is on 2, okay. so we have the algebra in the product of 2, and both projections are on 2, so from Bursa, so Bursa gives us an idea in this product. and an isomorphism between SL2 and the quotient. So this is K as co-dimension co-dimension 3. So uh, yeah. so here we have to describe that. So a small lemma we will prove later, saying that uh, describing all this k, so this k is in fact the set of v1. So there exists, let, excuse me, there exists an index. This k is a set of v1 to v n minus one, or maybe you, because of this R the late factors, it's V2 to Vn, uh, with Vi equal to 0. Yeah, so just uh, keep this lemma for, uh, the proof of this lemma for later. And then you apply it here. So what, what is the quotient? So I see 2 of C and minus 1 divided by this K is the this factor. Okay. You kill everyone, but not this one. And so this gives a C, so the isomorphism from Gursa isomorphism SL2 of C is that one that is given by Bursa Lema is in fact an isomorphism from this to the is factor. So meaning that H is included in the uh, V1 to Vn such that C V is vi is c v1 c minus 1 okay. let me just repeat what is going on here so this is isomorphism of SL2 with the is factor so it is given by matrix and a conjugacy this is a matrix of the conjugacy, and I'm writing here the isomorphism. And now we have this inclusion. And this is what we want to prove. So if the projection is not on 2, we have something with two index here that are bigger than 2. 
And here we have the case where one of the index is 1. So this lemma can be used to finish the proof. Now how to prove the lemma? makes us able to uh, conclude here. So, uh, the proof of the lemma. Now, K is in particular the sub algebra of this one. Yes? This is a sub algebra of this one, but we, you don't know that both projections are on to. And in fact, they cannot be all on to. So K is a sub algebra of this one, and the projection in SL2, projections of K in the factors that are SL2 here, must be ideal as the projection is on two of this group on each factor is on two they must be ideals and so either this one or everything yeah, so uh, now you select so k you have a SL2 uh, K, let's say, which is included in uh, SL2 C, small k is not good, P, into SL2 C N minus 1, where here you just keep the factor where the projection is onto such that the projections of K on factors of SL2 Z to the P are on to. Yeah, so you just take uh, N minus 1 vector in SL2, but you just, uh, you impose this vector to be zero when the projection of k is zero. So this is something like uh, you take v1 to be n or v2 to be n with some v i equals zero if the, pro the is projection is zero. Okay, so you can always see K as a sub algebra, in fact an ideal, into a product of SL2, maybe less factor in the product, but now both projections are on two. As P is smaller than N minus 1, that is smaller than N, you can apply uh, the theorem here, and you get that K is in this coordinate given by such an equation the, uh, let's say uh, these are not our k but I will use same letter yeah, so there exists C in uh, of C. Such that. so now oh, my lemma is this particular case of the lemma uh, I have in mind. So let's just uh, do this. So this k is included here, which is included here. But this k has co-dimension 3. So here you have a minus 2. Yeah. Which means the set of v1 that there exists an index where the projection is zero. V2 to Vn 
v2, v3 to the n, such that vi is 0. Okay, and now here, the projection is on 2 each time. Okay, and then there exist two index. Okay, this is 2 and this is n minus 2. Okay, you, you take out the first one, you take out this one, you have n minus 2 of them, and there is something here, a conjugacy, between the two that describe k as a sub Lie algebra. But it is not only a sub Lie algebra. Okay, so. Let me just uh, do this again. So now there exists I, an index, such that K is included uh, such that yes, V2 to Vn is Vi equal to 0. Okay. And this is this SL2. Now, if and k projections on factors k to SL2, c are on 2. The algebra of this one projection are on to. We want to prove that this is everything, so we will assume it is not, and it will lead us to a contradiction. So, as a subalgebra of this one, whose projection are on to, we know that there is these two index and a matrix. Such that in K, so K is included in, so here I'm not using exactly this form, yes, so I will use the same, V2 to Vn, and here we have V hat out, Vi is out. zero and the index is R K and L such that V L is C V K C minus one. Yeah. And we'll prove that this such a K cannot be an idea. And it is not so difficult as you just take uh, into this one, okay, this k here, into this one, into this product of SL2. You can choose something whose L's coordinate is zero and k's coordinate is not zero. And then doing the leaf bracket of two, you will find something which is which has a new zero coordinate and it cannot be and the second one is not zero and it cannot be that this belongs to the graph so let me write like this so you take all the zero here some uh, just two coordinate wk wl and then now here you put zero. Again, zero here. Huh? So you just take this element in SL2C to the end. Minus one. Minus two even. Here. And then you do the Lie bracket with uh, an element in K. 
So you take uh, as element in K something which is B2, blah, blah, blah. There is some BK here, blah, 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 BL, blah, blah, blah. And when you, so, and when you do the bracket, it's component-wise. And the bracket with zero is zero. So this is something in H. You do the bracket of these two, and you get zero, 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 just one non-zero component, which is uh, WL, BL, and zero here. Now you can choose your W in such a way that this is not zero. A nice W. You're working in SL2, so in SL2 is generated by three matrix. You can, and the, uh, the, as there is no ideal, means that for any VL, you will find something. Uh, yeah, and this is not zero. You can find it by end. But now look at that, and if H is an ideal, it will be the case that this will belong to H. But look at the relation of element in H. If VK is zero, as it is here, if the K's component is zero, then the L's component must be zero. But it is not. OK, so now we, we have everything we want, the lemma, blah, blah, blah. We have our theorem about least of algebra of PSL2, of SL2. And then, as a consequence, as I said, we can apply the theorem. The group PSL2N is good, and we can apply the theorem. So, what do we get? Zariski closure of gamma, and we know that the projection of the Zariski closure of gamma is included in some b is equal to some b included but different from y n an algebraic variety. that the Galois group of this leaf restricted to V, so, okay, this is, let's say, intersection with V cross PSL2C. If you restrict the graph to something like this, this means restriction of the function to a sub-variety is uh, Included by different from PSL2. So now you see we have a subgroup of this who will see that both projections are onto. So we look at projections. First, at projection on single factors. So as 
you started with non-constant, let's say, I will take a look at the is projection. The projection on the is factor. Yeah, and do uh, this product here, I take the is factor and the is factor. As this is non constant, is not constant, and y as dimension 1, then the projection on, of v is on 2. Yeah, this is a coordinate of a curve here that projects into a curve here, which is non constant. So the smallest algebraic sub variety here that contains this curve is everything. Yeah, and this means that uh, v cross g and y cross g, y cross g. Okay, which is the east projection I, I'm talking about, is on 2. Okay, just B is on 2, and this is just the east projection, and G is a product. Now, uh, if you look at the, the differential system that produced this leaf, that produced this graph of solution, you see that it is a block system. So the projection of the leaf here must be a leaf here. This is a leaf of, this is a graph of the J function seen as a map from Y to PSA2 of C. And because we have this uh, surjectivity, the same is true for the Zabuski closure. As a group, PSA2, the product here is acting component-wise, then the stabilizer here will project onto the stabilizer here. So the Galois of this one to the Galois of this one is also onto. So this is just the projection onto one of the components. So you have a subgroup, this is a subgroup PSL2 C to the N, that is a stabilizer of this one, and it will be sent onto the stabilizer of this one by just projection on the component, and this one is PSL2 of C. So you have a subgroup whose projections are onto. All the projections of this group are PSL2. So now you look at the projection onto couples of factor. projection are onto. Exactly the same reason here, because the differential system you're starting with is block diagonal. The leaf you have here will project into the product of the leaves. And then you do the same, the risky closure, stabilizer, and at the end, the gamma group this 
cross X. Okay, this is a K else projection. And it's on two. But you know, because you have a strict subgroup of this product, this is a strict algebraic subgroup of this product, whose projection are onto, yeah, by the group version of the theorem we had on Lie algebra, there must exist a K and an L such that this projection is not onto. We know that we cannot be true for any couple. Ah, indexes. So there is a couple of indexes where it is not on two, so there is a couple of indexes here, because this is the projection of the K and else factor, which is not so which is not dominant. So the image of V must be an algebraic subvariety. And so this proof this proved the first part of uh, at Chanuel for the J function. Yeah, so your image here is given by is included, in fact it is given by a polynomial equal to zero. And so this polynomial vanish on the projection of the curve y, which is just y at k, y at l. So it finished the proof of the first part. Remember that uh, in the full axe chanuel, we have also a description of the relation between the tk and the tl. And uh, it must be related to this uh, description of an uh, algebraic subgroup, but I cannot prove it directly. So the proof of the second part is a little bit, uh, is not direct, it's not very, okay, it is not direct. So I will end with some uh, uh, remark about uh, what we did. As you probably notice, you do not remember what is this function r, and I don't remember what is this function r I talked about in the, the first lecture. So in fact, all our proof is independent of that. Of the, fun the rational fun of this rational function. If you take any r, Remember the equation Schwarzian of j plus r of j g prime square equals zero. There was a particular function here. We never use this particular function. The only thing we use that the graph of j is the risky dense, or the Galois group is SL2. So the true hypothesis. The leaf is a risky lens. Right? And so, in fact, we have bigger theorem but with a weaker conclusion. And so, I may like, finish with a, an exercise, a special kind of exercise that is quite, uh, it is not really an exercise, it's a, a, a problem. A problem. Apply the main theorem. The theorem of the fourth lecture to prove that, to prove the following. Consider a special kind of uh, Riccati equation. Let u be a solution 
of this equation, du over dy is u square minus y. This is a, a special kind of Riccati equation that you build from a, a Airy differential equation. So I will call this Airy Riccati. Meaning that this solution can be uh, expressed using a special function called Airy functions. Okay, then you pick up three solutions of this one. So let u Not really. Let u zero, u one, and u infinity be solution of this. And you take two power series, convergent if you want, but non-constant. Yeah. If the transcendence degree of a C of the field generated by Y1, so I put some hat in previous part of the talk, so Y1, Y2, U0 of Y1, U0 of Y2, U1 of Y1, U1 of Y2, U infinity of Y1 u infinity of y2 Hop, some at everywhere so you have 8 functions you assume that this transcendence degree is strictly smaller than 7 so you assume you have 2 polynomial relation between all these 8 functions then y1 hat equal y2 hat So if you have two polynomial relations, then this function must be the same. There are no other choices. And so this is a real problem because the theorem will not apply directly. You can apply directly the theorem, so you know that this equation is related to a Airy linear equation. So you can translate this problem in terms of linear equations of system of the product of a curve with PSL2, so you have exactly in the same situation a curve, where is my, in this situation, a curve cross PSL2, and this curve is just C, so you can apply the same and you will find some polynomial relation between Y1 and Y2, but why do you get just the identity? So to get the identity, you have to understand what, what is the meaning of this inclusion here. So that's why it is not an exercise, it is a problem for uh, maybe June or July. So you have to, uh, to understand what is the inclusion here, and then you see that this polynomial relation here is very special, and you will need a small lemma. I will give the lemma to, to conclude. The small lemma you need is the following. If you are looking at maps from C plus P1 to C plus P1, YU is going to uh, P of Y, A of YU plus B of Y, or C of Y, U plus D of Y, map like this, we speak algebraic. So, algebraic mean we, you allow more than just a polynomial or, or rational here. You, you may have square roots, mean that the graph of phi is an algebraic curve. It's algebraic into the product of the source and target. So, if this phi is algebraic, all the A, B, C, D also. This I will call T. If T maps the graph of solutions of a re Riccati to 
solutions of a real cutting, then everything here is just identity. And in particular, phi is identity. So you have to understand all this, all this polynomial relation here, that are the polynomial relation between these two, but also all this one, there are other polynomial relations here, given by the theorem, saying that the Galois group is strictly smaller. And this description of the Galois group can be interpreted as the existence of something like this. But the, as there is just the identity, you must have this equality. So this end, this lectures on the at channel for J function. We start with J function, but at the end we have a bigger theorem. For instance, uh, this kind of theorem can be uh, with some analytical uh, lemma. This kind of theorem can be uh, now proved at the end. Thank you. <laughs>